Wow. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Sarah Middleton. Welcome to the Digital Preservation Awards 2020 presentation ceremony. It's World Digital Preservation Day. It's all very exciting. And I'm absolutely delighted to see you all looking so very glamorous. Thank you for sticking to our encouragement, our brief to kind of dress up. Uh, and, and you've done that. You look absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, my name is William Kilbright, uh, working for the Digital Preservation Coalition. And uh, thank you, Sarah, for all your efforts in bringing us together here today. Now, obviously, the ceremony is a bit different from the photos you've just seen from all the previous years. Uh, as we join uh, together from around the world, from our dining rooms and bedrooms and box rooms and offices, uh, from the spare rooms and kitchens uh, of digital preservation uh, the world over. Uh, it seems traditional that we start uh, World Digital Pre or the Digital Preservation Awards with uh, with bagpipes. I've been denied bagpipes uh, this year, so presumably that's a health hazard. Uh, so instead, let me try a word from the Bard to get us uh, underway. With joy unfeigned, brothers and sisters meet. Thanks, William. And we did, I mean, we did have grand plans, didn't we? We did want to try and kind of repeat the glitz and the glamour that you saw in those photos. And we should, right now, we should have been at the newly opened Bibliothèque Nationale du Luxembourg, who very kindly offered to host us there. But as the, award, uh, the events of the year unfolded, it became obvious that we'd have to do something a bit different. That wasn't going to be possible. Yeah, I mean, I confess we even uh, considered cancelling the whole thing uh, as the workload and all the difficulties piled up. Uh, but let, and, and let's face it, this year, of all years though, we've got an enormous amount of work to celebrate. Uh, some amazing digital preservation work is happening, despite, in some cases, because of uh, the pandemic. Yeah, and, and we thought in this year of isolation and quarantine, um, social distancing, we need every reason to bring people together. So we've actually never needed this celebration more and we've never actually had more to celebrate. Yeah, so thank you for joining us. Thank you for having the audacity to celebrate. Thank you for having uh, the solidarity uh, of your participation and having fun with us uh, this evening, uh, this afternoon, this morning, depending where you are. Yeah, and it, I mean, as we said, it, uh, the, what, the work that's been going on this year is actually uh, partly what inspired the theme for World Digital Preservation Day this year. So digits for good, um, by which we mean digits for a social good, doing good, people coming together to support uh, the community, to support each other, to support kind of keeping the world ticking over, quite frankly. Um, but also we mean for good as in forever. So. Uh, it's a it's a it's a good theme, and I think you'll you'll agree that uh, one that, that fits this celebration certainly. Absolutely. So, listen. I hope um, speaking now to you all uh, online, the hundred or more participants we have. I hope you've already heard from the finalists that we're going to uh, be talking about later. Uh, I hope you've seen their work, which they presented uh, generously and have to say at very short notice uh, at We Miss iPres, as well as on the recordings that we shared on the website this week. Uh, and you've had a chance to read their blog posts. Each and every one of our finalists represents to some uh, extent and to some very great extent that spirit uh, of digits for good. So here we are, Digital Preservation Awards, the presentation ceremony. And we do want to try and convey and recreate that feeling of, of warmth and congratulation and encouragement and celebration that we, we can do when we meet in person. So we have a few requests for you, William. Yes, yes, we do. So like, so let's not kid ourselves, this is a Zoom call. And normally at this point in a Zoom call, I'd be encouraging you all to switch your cameras off. Uh, but this isn't a, a normal uh, event, so please, if you're inclined to do so, please can I encourage you to leave your camera on so that we and you and the finalists can feel strongly part of this community. We like to see your faces. Well, just so that you know, we are streaming this event to the DPC's YouTube channel and we'll be recording it. So if you'd rather not have your image shown and recorded in this way, you are allowed to give your camera off. That's completely fine too. And normally at this point as well, I'd be drawing your attention on a Zoom call, I'd be drawing your attention to the chat box uh, for queuing up your questions. So, okay, please, no more questions, right? With joy unfeigned, the chat box is for cheering. 
is for hollering, is for passing on your congratulations. Uh, and you can also use, of course, all the other reaction buttons uh, to achieve the same result. Um, we are going to ask you, though, to keep your microphones off while the presentation is in progress. But we want to hear from you at certain points throughout the proceedings. So it's going to be bonkers, I'm sure, but <laughs> we want uh, the appropriate moment. We want to hear from you. We want you to cheer our winners. So I wonder if we could have a little bit of a practice at that. Um, so if everybody, so if, let's pretend I'm going to open a golden envelope. I'm going to announce a winner. So if you all in three, two, one, turn off your mics and give us a cheer. Let's see what that happens. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Sam again. Thank you. That was brilliant. That was really, really good. Who knew that we could have another first on Zoom uh, uh, on, uh, in 2020? Who knew there were any, any depths or any heights left to explore? Thank you uh, all very much. I think, I think we're ready to get underway. But just so you know that there's an opportunity to stay online after the formal proceedings, as it were, uh, just to join for a bit of a social, a bit of a get together. You're very, very welcome to uh, join us. There. I had an old uh, school headmaster who on one occasion after a, a school presentation said that at the end of the day, every, at the end of the presentation, everyone was almost welcome. I think what he meant was that we're all most welcome, but it didn't quite come out that way. Anyway, you're all most welcome to join us for the social celebration afterwards. And we did encourage you to bring a glass of something. I've got something waiting. No seco. Uh, uh, but yeah, so I'm going to open mine later. So feel free to open yours now if you wish. And cheers as you go along. Or you can save it till the end, as I shall be. Otherwise, I'll be spilling things all over the place. Okay, so now let us get underway. We start with a message from our sponsors. Uh, and uh, this year, uh, I'm delighted to welcome uh, Vint Cerf. Vint, I saw you online a moment ago, uh, uh, who joins us, I guess, from New York, uh, from the US. Anyway, we start with a message from our sponsors, uh, and Vint has uh, recorded a short video which we'll show, uh, which will get us properly underway. So over to John, our technical lead, uh, and the video from Vint. Hello. My name is Vince Cerf. I'm Google's chief internet evangelist, but I'm here before you uh, as uh, one of the sponsors of the Digital Preservation Awards event. Google is proud to be among those who sponsor uh, this event and who are very attentive to the preservation of digital information. Uh, as you might imagine, uh, across the data centers uh, around the world that Google operates, there are exabytes of digital content that many people around the world are relying on us to preserve, not only for current access, but uh, on into the future. We've all seen that uh, some older media uh, lasted quite a long time, including things like baked tablets uh, from the Babylonian and Assyrian periods, written in cuneiform uh, and uh, cooked in accidental fires where warehouses burned down. So those tablets have lasted 5,000 years. And we have other media that are uh, similarly quite um, versatile and also uh, durable. Uh, think about vellum for a moment, which is basically you know, goat skin or calf skin. Uh, that material is dem demonstrably has lasted 1,000 or even as much as 2,000 years. Of course, you have to kill a lot of cattle and, uh, in order to have uh, available resources. So I'm not necessarily recommending that we return to those media, but we should be very attentive to the value of the information that those media have preserved and ask ourselves how we achieve a similar value for digital content, which, as I'm sure every one of you is aware, is being produced at increasingly large, uh, in increasingly large amounts uh, every single day. Some of us are uh, camera freaks and uh, we take a lot of digital pictures. I mean, some people suggest that something on the order of a couple trillion photographs uh, were taken in 2019. And I'm pretty sure that most of the people who took those pictures assumed that the uh, images would be available in perpetuity to show their uh, children and their grandchildren. 
and perhaps even uh, beyond that. And so the question is, how do we achieve that objective? And those of you who are assembled here tonight and who are celebrating these awards implicitly understands how important and valuable it is to preserve that information. Whether it's important to an individual or important to, uh, for national purposes, as the uh, National Archives are here in the United States, uh, it doesn't matter what that motivation is. What does matter is the mechanisms by which the information can be preserved and, more important, the ability to, to sustain the cost of that preservation and the accessibility of the content which implies, of course, that software that's needed, if it's needed, in order to render that content or to interact with it, as you would with a spreadsheet, uh, is equally important. And there are many, many facets of, of that problem, uh, which involves intellectual property, among other things, source code, and so on. There are many complexities associated with the preservation of digital content. And so those of you who are participating in the pursuit of solutions and who are inventing uh, ways in which to achieve the objective are to be congratulated. So once again, uh, all congratulations to the winners of this night's awards. I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful evening. And I do hope that at some point in the future, we'll be able to get together face to face. Meanwhile, see you on the net. So many, many thanks to Google and to Vint for that message and to all of the other sponsors who've made the awards possible this year. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, we are now in a position ready to, to move on. So one of the great pleasures, uh, uh, if you like, or one of the great side effects of our uh, meeting online today uh, is that we're able to dial people in from all around the world, uh, including Vint and the sponsors, but also now it gives me pleasure to hand over to uh, Laura Malloy uh, in Paris. Uh, Laura is the chair of the judges, a role which she will explain to us a little bit. So uh, with great pleasure now over to Laura. Thank you, William. It's my very great pleasure to welcome everybody on the call again today whatever time zone it may be with you. My name is Laura Malloy and I'm the Senior Research Lead here at CoData, the Committee on Data for the International Science Council here in a very cold and bright Paris. And I have the honour of being this year's Chair of the Judging Panel. So this is the ninth round of the Digital Preservation Awards. Can you believe it? Ninth already. And it's a highlight of World Digital Preservation Day. Some people may say it's a highlight of this year, quite <laughs> frankly. It's a wonderful award. It's a wonderful award ceremony. It's a wonderful community. And I'm very, very happy that we're going ahead with it. This is the first time the ceremony has been held online, which I think reflects the way that this community has worked so incredibly well, despite the circumstances of the pandemic. And we found solutions together. And to, to really celebrate and be able to come together using the, the internet and using the goodwill of all the members of this community to make this happen. And I think this emphasizes the global nature of the challenges that we face and the achievements that we can bring about if we work together and if we support each other and if we look for solutions to the problems that we all face. So in that spirit of celebration, we have seven awards to give today over the next hour. There's six competitive categories plus the DPC Fellowship. Each of the category vice chairs will tell you more about the category. So for now, I'll just tell you what they are so you know what to look forward to. First of all, we have the new collaboration and cooperation category, which I'm very excited about. Um, we also have research and innovation teaching and communications, the award for the most distinguished student work, safeguarding the digital legacy, and commerce, industry, and the third sector. Plus, we have the return of the DPC Fellowship to recognize an outstanding personal contribution to digital preservation. And you'll hear more about the fellowship as well as the person who's receiving it this year later on. So this year we received nominations from across 14 countries and I think this is a really great step in the right direction to keep on increasing the global nature, the global participation of these awards. Because these awards exist to raise awareness about important digital preservation work, wherever that may be happening, and to celebrate these achievements which are too often overlooked, I think. 
I think given the importance of digital preservation, it is only right that we shine a light on this work that often happens behind closed doors. So each of these winners will be receiving a prize for each of the six categories, which consists of a trophy, a cash prize and a frame certificate, which all sounds good to me. But I, I've been thinking about this and it strikes me that many of the previous winners and finalists have confirmed that the biggest prize for them was the recognition that the award brings to their work. And I really hope this continues to be the case. This is a moment of reflection to really look at the quality, the diversity and the value of what people in digital, preser digital preservation do. And I really hope that that does come through for this year's winners as well. So what are we celebrating? We're celebrating the last two years of this community's work to ensure that our digital memory is secured for the future. And we're celebrating with the winners and with the finalists and all who are nominated. To be honest, being nominated for this award in itself is an amazing achievement. And I'm awestruck by the quality and the range of the work that we had the pleasure of looking at this year. And none of this, of course, would be possible without the generous dedication of time and expertise of our panel of judges. So let me quickly introduce them. I believe they're on the screen. Yes, they are, great. We have Neil Grindley, we have Natalie Harrower, Susan Corrigal, Kirsty Lingstadt, Sally McInnes, Anthea Sellis, Sheila Morrissey, Karen Sampson, Neil Chu Hong, Marcel Rass, John Sheridan, Neil Jeffries, Roxana Maurer, Joanna Fleming, Abby Grotke, Angela Baking, April Miller, and Sharon McMeekin, and William Kilbride from this shady little organization called the DPC that I think some of you have heard of. The judging panel is an awe-inspiring group. We start with a privileged close-up view of the most interesting and the innovative initiatives that, that are nominated for this award. And we, we really follow up with lively debate. Let's call it that. This is a discussion that people really bring their hearts into. We're looking at every single thing that's submitted here and thinking, what is it that they're doing? What do we want to bring out? What's the value? What's the sparkle here? Uh, it really is an amazing process to go through. And it's my role as chair to ensure that the procedures are followed, that conflicts of interest are handled appropriately, and that applications are judged entirely on their own merit. And it's my pleasure to confirm that all these points went very smoothly this year. So this at least was one voting process that has gone well. Uh, so thank you very much to all the judges. And thank you again to our sponsors. Their generous contributions support the prizes for each of the categories. And that means we can present these to our winners. So this really is my, all I wanted to say, that's really, that's really my main message is thank you for joining in this celebration. Please do congratulate all of our finalists for their work. So tweet them, tweet at them, subtweet them, blog them, write congratulator emails, post them champagne, whatever it is that gets the point across. Let's make the most of having today here together to celebrate each other and the value of working together and the diversity of talent in this fabulous community. So thank you for being here. So now I'll hand back to William and we can get awarding. Thanks, Laura. That's that's wonderful. Yeah, you're right. We can. I think that's it. We can we can get going. We can start with our first category, which is the new award for collaboration and cooperation. And uh, I think our next stop is in Toronto with Anthea Sellers and in London with Neil Grindley. So uh, I'll I'll ask you to take it away, Anthea. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you, William. Thank you to the DPC uh, for. Uh, having me as a judge and uh, letting ICA sponsor the Cooperation and Collaboration Award. So uh, just a bit about uh, the International Council and Archives, why we thought it was really a great opportunity for us to sponsor an award. So um, I think we, like I said, we're really pleased to be able to support this year's DPC awards uh, and to be able to sponsor the Collaboration and Cooperation Award, um, you know, ensuring the preservation of digital data is really something that ICA and DPC do at the international level. Uh, and so we are collaborating as well <laughs> in, this, in this initiative and, and building cooperative relationships between two uh, important organizations uh, that foster and advocate for these types of things. Um, and I think uh, participating in the world 
uh, in these awards really allows us to celebrate, as we've said uh, at the beginning of this call, uh, all of the amazing, incredible work uh, that and in this instance, the, the work that's happening around collaborative and cooperative relationships to make digital preservation happen and to do digital preservation for good. Um, so it, you know, we see such a wide variety of practitioners getting involved in digital preservation. It's not simply sort of the realm, if you will, of the archivist, traditional archivist. It's really it cross cuts different professions, different professional backgrounds, different expertise. And I think that is what really the cooperation and collaboration award is really all about. So just to give a bit of background to those of you on the call, I know there was a, earlier this week a video that showed some of our finalists for this award and a bit of an explanation, but just for the sake of, of, of being clear about what this award is all about. So collaboration and cooperation celebrates significant, uh, significant collaboration across institutional, professional, sectoral, ge and geographic boundaries, which have uh, had a demonstrable and positive impact on digital preservation. It is presented to the group movement partnership or initiative that through shared vision, uh, uh, understanding and collaborative effort uh, ha have demonstrated this. And that was, that was the criteria that the judges were looking for. So we had a lot of applications in this category, but we managed to narrow it down to three. So our three finalists are the National Digital Preservation, uh, Steward, sorry, National Digital Stewardship Alliance and the revision of the levels of digital preservation, the NSLA or the National State Libraries of Australia and their project on the National E-Deposit project, and last but definitely not least, the DDHN or the Dutch Digital Heritage Network. So Neil, where are you? I can't see you on the screen right now. I'm, um, I'm here, Anthea. Awesome. <laughs> so <laughs> you've got the golden envelope. I do. So, Thank you very much, Anthea. Right. I think it's an exciting bit with the golden envelope. I, I know. I feel like there should be music. Yeah. I feel like we're at the Oscars. <laughs> just wait. Just wait. I'm sure there will be. I'm sure there will be. Oh, yes. God, what a pleasure it's been to be a judge. Thank you so much, DPC and fellow judges. What a hard decision this was. Uh, everyone, all the nominees doing really important collaborative work. Really, really great stuff. Uh, and we applaud you all. We will be applauding you all. But one, there has to be one winner. Uh, I know. So, here it is in the envelope. So hard, so hard to choose. Drum roll, drum roll. Drum um, roll. The uh, ICA award for collaboration and cooperation goes to the NDSA Yay. Levels of Digital Preservation Revision Project. Mics Yay. off, let's cheer. Yay. 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 Yes. Very good, very good. Well done, NDSA. So I think now we're going to hand off to someone from the NDSA uh, to say Hi, a few I did, words. I did see you. Are you there? I'm here. Would you Would you care to say a few words? Oh, geez. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I, I think it goes without saying that this award is being received uh, on behalf of the dozens of individuals who contributed to the overall project. And, you know, it's an honor just to be nominated, uh, as was mentioned. And I think the the solid effort from everyone, both past, present, and future is a, a promise that we will uh, use this award as kind of the rocket fuel to keep uh, this work going forward in the future. So thank you to everyone who contributed. Thank you to the judges. And thank you to the DPC for gathering us all together to celebrate these successes. So thank you. Thank you thank very you much. Can everyone's microphone. Very good. <laughs> Thank you so much, by the way. Many congratulations. So uh, with that, let me then move on to what's next. Uh, Sarah, what's next is the uh, award for the Software Sustainability Institute Award for Research and Innovation, which gives me great pleasure then to hand on to live to Edinburgh to Neil Chu Hong at the University of Edinburgh and also to Aberystwyth to Sally McInnes at the National Library of Wales. Uh, Neil, are you there? Hi, William. Thank you. And it's great to be joining all of you for this uh, amazing, if virtual, ceremony. Uh, lovely to see all of your faces. It makes me feel like the world is actually turning for the better. Uh, so uh, I've been asked to say a few words about why it's been important for the SSI to sponsor these awards. 
the Software Sustainability Institute values the pioneering of opportunities that will benefit others and the working together to deliver collective impact. We've been proud to be part of this wonderful community of people, all supporting advances in digital preservation. And so we're delighted to be sponsoring this award for the third time. This award uh, for research and innovation celebrates significant technical or intellectual accomplishments, which practically lower the barriers to effective digital preservation. It's presented to a project, an initiative or a person that in the eyes of us, the judges has produced a tool or a framework a standard service or even an approach that has or will have in the future the greatest impact in securing our digital legacy. I think I speak for all of the judges for this award that it was really tough this year because of all of the amazing submissions but in the end there are three finalists for this award which you have heard a little bit more about earlier in this week and so those three finalists are first levels of born digital access. Second, Diagram, the digital archiving graphical risk assessment model created by the Safeguarding the Nation's Digital Memory Project. And third, the Oxford Common File Layout, OCFL version 1.0. And so I get to hand off from one nation of the UK to another and over to Sally down in Wales to open the golden envelope. Thank you so much, Neil. Thank you um, for that. Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, it was a, a great experience being a judge, um, a very difficult one. As Neil said, it was a very difficult decision, but sadly there can only be one winner and da, 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 opening the envelope. The winner is, are we ready? Are we steady? Born digital access. So many congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Levels Born Digital Access. Well, I think I saw Brian on the call a moment ago. Brian Beats, are you there? So uh who do we have from the Levels of Born? Digital access team. Well, uh, if you're there, speak now, or uh, we'll move, or we should move on. Okay, I think maybe we should uh, invite them on right at the end if they're still with us. But let's uh, let's move on. Sarah, uh, what's next? Ah, yeah, certainly. So the next award is the Digital Heritage Network, the Dutch Digital Heritage Network Award for Teaching and Communications. Um, so I'm delighted to introduce Marcel Ras, who I, th I think is in The Hague, uh, and Sheila Morrissey in New Jersey. Marcel, Sheila, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you, William. And thank you very much, DPC, for being part in this wonderful experience uh, well, as a member of the uh, team of judges, but also as a sponsor for this uh, uh, awards category. Uh, let me say a few words about uh, uh, why we are proud uh, being a sponsor of this uh, uh, Teaching and Communications uh, Award. Um, because this award uh, matches perfectly with the goals and activities of, of the network. And that is to develop services and skills, helping heritage organizations in their tasks to preserve digital information. Uh, and in these times, it is even more important than ever, I believe. Uh, a network of organizations is all about collaboration. So we could say that our network is a kind of one for all, all for one uh, approach. However, collaboration is often, often difficult. It demands for di di diplomacy a lot of patience, a sense of humor and skills, and skills need to be developed. I, also a sense of humor needs to be developed, I believe. Um, so the award for teaching and communication celebrates significant efforts to empower workforces or engage policymakers with skills and information they need to make digital preservation a practical reality. And the award for teaching and communication is presented to the project, initiative, team or person that in the eyes of the judges has, has produ produced training resources, a curriculum or a campaign that have or will have the greatest impact in securing our digital legacy or undertaken empirical research that will ev 
evidently support the development of those skills. And uh, earlier this week, uh, you heard about the four, the four finalists, not three, but the four finalists in this award. And the four finalists in this award are creating environmentally sustainable digital preservation. And the second one is the digital records curation program. The, th the third finalist in this uh, category is the Spanish language webinars program in sound and audiovisual digital preservation of the Ibero American Network of Digital Preservation of Sound Audiovisual Archives, RIPDASA. And the fourth finalist in this category is theory and craft of digital preservation. So here they are all four listed. So I would hand over now to Sheila in the US uh, with the golden envelope to announce the winner in this category. Thank you, Marcel. Thanks to the GPC. I know um, Marcel and I and all of the judges really uh, were so impressed by the extraordinary work uh, in this extraordinary aspect of digital preservation, expanding the knowledge and capabilities and information both across space to everyone, really everyone in the world and over time, because this is really how what we do and how we do it is going to be passed forward. So congratulations to these amazing uh, nominees and, and um, the winner, the winner is the Digital Records Creation Program. Congratulations. Yay! 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 <laughs> Congratulations. I'm pretty sure I saw James Lowry in the call. James, are you there? I am, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, uh, yeah, I'm really uh, amazed and, um, and really appreciative that uh, we won this award. So thank you so much to the Dutch Digital Heritage Network. Um, and I want to say thank you to especially to Margaret Crockett, who runs the training program at the ICA, to Norman Charbonneau uh, on the program commission of the ICA, all of the volunteers around the world who helped to put this material to, together and deliver it, uh, and to everyone at the ICA secretariat for their support in delivering it too. Thank you so much. Let's have another round of applause. Thank you, James. Thanks. William, who's next? Well, interesting you should ask. Uh, next is the National Records uh, of Scotland Award, uh, which is for distinguished work by uh, a student. Uh, so in honour of that, I'm going to hand over now to uh, a combination of Edinburgh and Ottawa. So Susan Corrigal, I think, first of all, uh, at the National Records of Scotland. Are you with us, Susan? I am indeed. Yes, hello. Um, thank you very much, William, and thank you very much, everyone, for taking part, submitting entries, and for organising and judging this really quite amazing day. Um, I'm Susan Currigal. I'm Head of Preservation at the National Register of Scotland, and the, my organisation is absolutely thrilled to be sponsoring the award for the most distinguished student work in digital preservation. This particular award celebrates impressive work by a student which lowers the barriers to digital preservation. And everyone, I think, in turn benefits from their diverse voices and the fresh perspectives which the, the students and their work bring. The award itself is presented to the student who, in the eyes of the judges, has produced a, an essay or coursework or dissertation that has or will have the greatest contribution towards securing our digital legacy. And I think it's worth just saying here too that the doctoral level studies which demonstrate original research, they're not normally submitted as, as part of this category. And so today we have three finalists for this award and we heard about them earlier this week as well. And finalist one is, is that? Yep, is Andrew Davidson with Fraser Borough on film. 
And then we have Badr al-Rabi with the maturity level of digital preservation in the Sultanate of Oman's institutions, a comparative study. And our final finalist is Lottie Wiesman with the significant properties of spreadsheets stakeholder analysis. And now, um, just before I hand over to my fellow judge, Angela Beeking in Canada with her golden envelope, I just want to take a moment to reflect um, with the, my fellow judges about what was really an incredibly rewarding category to judge with such high quality entries throughout. The debate certainly was stimulating. And now um, over to Angela. Hi, thank you, Susan. Um, just before I announce the winner, um, I wanted to say also what a privilege it was to learn about the exceptional work that is being done by students in digital preservation. Um, I echo Susan, uh, students are bringing their energy and their ideas and enthusiasm uh, to drive innovation in our field. And I'm so pleased to have been a part of the, the effort to acknowledge uh, and to celebrate uh, the work of those students. So please join me in congratulating uh, everyone and all of the student work. Um, but yes, there can only be one winner. So I do have my golden envelope. So without further ado, the winner of the National Records of Scotland Award for distinguished student work is Lottie Weisman for the Properties of Spreadsheets Stakeholder Fantastic. And Lottie, if you're there, I'm sure I saw you coming into the call earlier on. Are you are you there and able to put on your mic for a quick uh, word or two? Uh, yeah, I'm still here. Uh, I really wasn't expecting this. Um, thank you so much to the judges and to the DPC, of course, for organizing all this. And I would really like to take this time to also thank my, my supervisors from the university and also everyone from the uh, Dutch National Archives who uh, was just great. And thank you all so much. Let's have another round of applause then. Let's be welcome. Well done. Well done. Excellent. Sarah, Sarah, yes. what's next? Next, oh, it's so exciting. So <laughs> next up, we have uh, the presentation of the National Archives UK Award for Safeguarding the Digital Legacy. So please welcome John Sheridan, who is in London, and April Miller, who is in Washington, DC. John and April, are you there? Hello. We're here. Hey. So, um... Uh, just a few words about um, the National Archives. So um, my name is John Sheridan. I'm the Digital Director at the National Archives in the UK. And um, this community um, is so special. Um, this is where we come together to learn from each other um, and share our experiences, share our work. Um, and work with our colleagues and work with our friends. Um, and I think this year has really shown what a, what a wonderful community this is to be part of. And the Digital Preservation Awards are a fantastic opportunity, not just for celebrating excellence in digital preservation, but celebrating the strength of our community and our common endeavor. And that's very much part of um, why the National Archives wants to support the awards and um, really celebrate the excellence that um, is around us. Um, now, the award for safeguarding the digital legacy celebrates the practical application of preservation skills to protect at-risk digital objects. It's, if you like, the long, hard yard to digital preservation award. It's drawing attention to the concrete effort the concrete efforts to ensure important elements of our generation's digital memory can remain available for, for future generations. Now, it need not involve particularly innovative work, 
but must illustrate a really deep understanding of the risks that digital objects face. And it should be an exemplar for <coughs> digital preservation best practice and why preservation matters. So we have um, three outstanding shortlisted uh, nominees and they are firstly preserving the League of Nations digital archives and secondly the UK web archive celebrating 15 years and then Thirdly, Amplifying Change, a history of the Atlantic philanthropies on the island of Ireland. So I'm now going to hand over to April. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. <laughs> um, first, um, big thanks to the DPC and to the fellow judges. Um, I'm a first time judge and this was an incredible opportunity to see about all of the amazing nominations, the nominations in these categories. Congrats to all of you. What exceptional work. Um, I, I really think that this award too really highlights the theme of this year's awards, which is um, uh, digits for good, right? That this is the reason why we do this work is to preserve this rich history uh, for future generations. So golden envelope. So exciting. Uh, the National Archives UK Award for Safeguarding the Digital Legacy goes to the UK Web Archive celebrating 15 years. Wow. Yay! 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 UK Web Archive! Punching the air right with the light. Ian, you're there. Would you like to say a few words? Oh, oh, amazing, amazing. Thank you. I say um, thank you to the judges, um, sponsors, everyone involved in the award. We're really, really amazingly pleased to have won, and it's a huge honour for us to be recognised um, in this way. And to have been amongst such excellent finalists, such amazing projects, and really inspiring ones. Um, we always say that it's not possible to understand the 21st century without the archive web and um, we've been posting to our blog all week about the diversity and variety in our collections. I'm personally always amazed and I'm incredibly proud of the work that Andy Jackson and Nicola Bingham lead for the web archive and also for our whole team, um, both at the British Library and across the UK Legal Deposit Libraries. And the work we do with our friends, the friends that we've worked with um, in the UK, with the International Internet Preservation Consortium, an incredible community, and everyone around the world that we've, we've worked with over the past 15 years um, around kind of preservation access and, and development. Thank you, thank you so much. Wonderful, well done. Another round of applause. Super, thank you, Ian, and many congratulations. So uh, we're making good progress. Uh, let me turn now to the Digital Preservation Award, uh, or the Award for Outstanding uh, Work uh, in Commerce, Industry, uh, and the Third Sector. Uh, and so to introduce the award winners and the, the, the finalists, uh, let me hand over now to Karen Sampson of the Lloyds Banking Group Archive uh, in London, and also Neil Jeffries uh, in Oxford. Karen, are you there? I am, William. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, just to say, I'm delighted to, to have been involved in the judging and uh, you know, great work by the DPC team uh, to put all this together under quite uh, unusual circumstances, I think it's fair to say. Uh, I'm particularly delighted to be involved with the award for the Outstanding Digital Preservation Initiative in commerce industry and the third sector. So this award very much gives us a chance to sort of call out, encourage and celebrate the important work carried out by teams not working in a memory institution. Uh, so the category is, is, is open to whether you're a business or a charity or an NGO or a social enterprise, for example. Uh, so we have two finalists today, both of whom very much um, reflect what's going on in the wider world at the moment. So the first one we have is the Royal College of Nursing, uh, the Library and Archive Service, and they and their way a new way of sharing nursing history. 
And the second one is the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, their records and archives. Neil, if I could hand over to you to announce the winner. Thank you very much. And I think it's nice to see that these both really do exemplify the digits for good theme that we've got here. Anyway, I have the golden envelope here. So the DPC award for the most outstanding digital preservation initiative in commerce, industry, and the third sector is the UNHCR records and archives. Congratulations. <laughs> Simultaneously, about a dozen. I see a number of them call. Would you like, Patricia? Well, I'll invite you. Would you like to say something? I think it's me, Montserrat. Montserrat. Hello. Um, uh, it's difficult to talk. <laughs> Such an amazing award for us, and this represents all the work we have been doing. And thank you a lot for the judges and the Digital Preservation Coalition because of this award, which represents for us a recognition in our organization, which is a big organization working for refugees. And as you can imagine, uh, digital preservation is not the main, the main goal of the organization, but we have managed to show how what we do will help refugees, we help communities of refugees, and this is now recognized by you, and now we are going to announce to the whole, to the whole <laughs> unit CR. Um, I think that this is the work of a whole section for 20 years, with all my predecessors who understood, were very bold, thinking that we should go for digital and, and then find a way to preserve it. And then I have to say that, um, when we got uh, the head of what is the digital preservation, Patricia, we finally found a way to do it. It was a dream for many years. And thanks to Patricia, it became a way to do it and a work to do it. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. I just so I can say this. <laughs> and the whole team, thank you for being here. Wonderful. Let's have another, another round of applause. Well done, you and if I think I may reflect on just a short moment of Digital Preservation Awards history, that makes Patricia Sleeman the winner of the award twice now, having previously won in 2012 for uh, the Communications and Training uh, Award. So the message here is that if you uh, want to be in for winning a Digital Preservation Award, make Patricia uh, an offer. Uh, she's got a good track record there. So uh, congratulations. Thanks, William. <laughs> <laughs> So, Sarah, how are we doing? I think I'm right in saying our next stop, uh, and in fact the last award uh, for us, uh, is to turn our attention now to the DPC Fellowship, which yep. uh, will be presented uh, by Richard uh, Ovenden. Richard in Oxford. Richard, you were there a moment ago. I've lost you on screen. Are you still with us, Richard? I'm here. I'm here. Can you see me? Got you, Richard. Over to you. Great. So, um, greetings from Oxford, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, such a pleasure to be here every two years. I have the uh, immense privilege of uh, presenting this award, and it's a great pleasure to be doing so again. And um, before I go into uh, those words, I'd like to just say my congratulations to William, Sarah, Sharon, John, and all of the DPCers who've worked so incredibly hard to put this event on under really very trying circumstances with all the uncertainty um, and the complexity of the current situation we all find ourselves in. But it's been such a pleasure uh, over the last hour, and we're not quite done yet. So, um, the DPC Fellowship, as you all know, is the highest award offered by the Digital Preservation Coalition. It's awarded every two years to an individual in recognition of substantial, generous and distinguished contribution to securing our digital legacy. Nominations are not advertised. Instead, the DPC members are invited to make confidential recommendations of individuals they think meet this description. The judges review the nominations and only make the award when they reach consensus on a single name. So it's tough to get to this point is extraordinary achievement in itself. The nominee has no idea that they're under consideration. On this occasion, I can confirm that the DPC Fellow for 2020 received the news of the nomination some way in a mountainside on a family holiday. So we were not only delighted to pass on the news and even more so that they made it safely down the mountain again. 
our fellow graduate Makong Laude in English and Humanities from Minot State University in North Dakota, before taking a degree in computing science from the International College in Bingesh Gladbach, Germany, and then on to a master's in library and information science at the Humboldt University in Berlin. Our fellow has worked in different roles at the at German National Library of Science and Technology since 2009, joining the Nestor Coordination Group in 2009, the Board of Open Planets Foundation in 2012, and the Premise Editorial Committee. Our fellow is well known across the digital preservation community as an insightful and generous contributor, working fluently between English and German, and thus bringing many people together. The judges have described our fellow as an emerging leader in the community, but with much greater depth and breadth of experience than would normally be expected from this designation. As you might expect, this year's fellow was published and presented widely on various intricate preservation problems, including the role of PDF in digital preservation, file format validation, the opportunities and challenges of the OAIS uh, model, the preservation of architectural 3D data, active software stewardship, and the valuable linkages between library and information science, IT and preservation skills. It's just exhausting just li uh, listing all of those uh, incredible areas of expertise and, and uh, contribution. One judge noted that this research consistently makes the complex issues accessible and with a commitment to the practical application of knowledge in order to help digital preservationists solve the problems. Another judge noted how our fellow works transparently on the day-to-day -day challenges of preservation through Twitter, sharing tidbits in a way that very few do, and thereby lifting our collective knowledge one tweet at a time, and keeping the discussion of digital preservation technologies and challenges in the open and making them accessible. Therefore, in recognition of a substantial, generous and distinguished contribution to securing our digital legacy, it gives me enormous pleasure to introduce the 2020 DPC Fellow, Mickey Lindlar. Mickey! It's Mickey! <laughs> well deserved. Congratulations. Thank okay. you. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, you. Um, I had the luxury to prepare a few words. It's good that I can prepare it. I think I will be able to say something. Understand. Um, so, Dear Richard, thank you for that. It was very kind words. Dear judges, dear DPC, dear digital preservationists worldwide, dear colleagues and friends. Digital preservation is mostly done in the dark. Like a lifeguard in a sea of bits and bytes, we ensure that all stay afloat. We take precautions, we rescue when needed, we raise a warning finger at unsuitable gear. Our job is to create and maintain safe environments where data lives, lives to be used by others. The Digital Preservation Awards is one of the rare occasions where the work in the dark is put into the spotlight to be seen and recognized. Praised by your peers is the highest form there is, and I feel very honored to receive the DPC Fellowship. William asked me to share my digital preservation hopes with you. So here are three brief hopeful reflections on the theme, Digits for Good. To me, Digits for Good also means Digits for the Greater Good for All. There are many ways how we as a community can contribute to this beyond the decolonization work currently conducted by archives and libraries. How open and approachable are we as a community on a global, national, institutional, but also personal level? Are we doing enough to reach those currently not present here? And why aren't they here? How can we support small, often volunteer run community archives? Are our standards and processes available and understandable to a wider community? <laughs> Um, sorry, what are social and cultural implications of our technological choices of file formats? And what roles does universal accessibility play? The fact that our community is discussing these questions and efforts like OPF, DDHN, Diversity and Inclusion Working Group and others simultaneously is a sign of maturity as well as a test of our strength. I'm hoping for a digital preservation future with a wider diversity of voices, with new insights and equitable participation options and conferences and networks for all. So much for community. What about the technological and organizational side of things? Keeping digits for good or forever requires good practice. But when is good good enough and who decides on this? Standard processes and guidelines exist, but reality may already make us leave may already leave us compromising, even if we're sometimes not aware of it. 
We argue about proprietary file formats, but may store the bits on a storage medium like LTO tape that is only produced by a couple of vendors worldwide who furthermore were engaged in a legal battle for a while. Digital preservation practice needs to be built on a solid understanding of both information management as well as information technology. But how can we ensure that both parts are equally understood in the same depth and width? This is especially true for the tech part. So much knowledge of storage technology of file formats and automation processes exists within our community today, but much of it lives only on internal wikis in experts' brains, or even in Q&A platforms like Q&A DigiPress or even Stack Overflow. I'm hoping that we can find a more systematic way to bring the organizational and technological side of digital preservation together. Lastly, doing something for good requires reflection on what has been done and how it's been going. A decade ago, we may have been either on team migration or on team emulation, but today we can all agree that both are viable strategies that complement each other. I'm hoping that 10 years from now, we will feel the same way about team research data management versus team digital preservation. The two communities can learn so much from each other and have the power to collaborate on workflows that equally take data producer, preservation, and consumer requirements into consideration. Yet we still have a long way to go to understand each other and to truly work hand in hand. In the end, Digits for Good is an exciting promise. Since I suppose the DPC Fellowship ties me to the DPC for Good, my promise is to contribute to my aforementioned hopes wherever and whenever I can. Thank you for seeing and valuing my work. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for this award, the highest praise to be achieved in digital preservation. It really means a lot to me. Thank you, Mickey. Can I ask everybody else to give you another round of applause? Yay! Yay. 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 <laughs> That, that was a terrific speech. And by the way, you can read it on the DPC blog because we've published it uh, as a World Digital Preservation Day blog. Uh, that'll be going live in just a few moments. So thank, thank you again. Thank you. Thanks to all of our, um, our winners, but also to all of our finalists. I think we're nearly done. So I'm just going to look for one more person. Juan, are you in the room uh, to say a few words of thanks? Yes, I'm here. Here you are. Thanks oh, very much. Over to you. Oh, thanks, Sarah and William. Um, uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for joining. What a shame to bring this all to an end, just when we were having so much fun. But that's what uh, it's my duty to do. So here we are. Um, thanks for everyone for joining. Um, particularly, of course, thank, I'd like to thank some specific people. Um, firstly, all the nominees who took the time to enter. Um, without the entries, there's no competition. So. Uh, which because of them that we're all able to have this uh, wonderful celebration. Uh, thank you to the voters, uh, to all the DPC members who participated in the vote. I'm uh, extremely grateful to that, clearly the most important vote that's going on in the world at the moment. And to all the judges, particularly Laura Malloy, uh, chair of the judges we heard from earlier, um, and all the other judges, um, Laura went through them earlier, so I'll just very quickly run through them again. Angela, Neil, Susan, Joanna, Neil, Ali, Kathy, Neil, Kirsty, Roxanne, Sally, Sharon, April, Sheila, Marcel, Karen, Anthea, and John. I know it's a lot of work to, um, to pull out the best or the, to choose one from all of these fantastic entries. So um, thank you for all that hard work. Uh, I'd like to thank our headline sponsor, uh, Google, and you heard from Vince earlier, it's a pleasure to hear uh, his thoughts, and to all our other sponsors of the awards, the Software System of the same European Institute, National Record of Scotland, the Heritage Network, International Council of Archives, and the National Archives. Okay, thank you to those and their representatives here. And to our other supporters, Archive and Artifactual, HBD, CAE Technology Systems, Formpipe, Lipnova, Max Communication, Preservica, uh, represented uh, here. I think most of them are represented here by Tom Lynham, Tessa Walsh, Sarah Menzi, Sam Nivit, Antonio Gilgero, Martina, and Maria Fuentes, and John. Thanks also to the digital. and providing such a welcome to us all. Um, 
I'd like to remind you, I think that digital preservation and these awards are about advocacy. So the awards are not finished today. Today's really the start. Please tweet, blog, tell the world about these awards and all the great things you've heard today so that we can keep pushing the advocacy of new So finally, and this, of course, our organizers for today, uh, William and Sarah, our great team, uh, leading us through the events, and John McMillan, who's been supporting behind the scenes. So thank you to all of those. Let's give them all a round of applause. Yay. 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 Um, and then really finally, let's um, raise a glass to toast. I have one here. I swapped my tea for something else. Um, so well, it's very difficult with that background to work, but never mind. Um, to all the nominees, especially the finalists and particularly the winners, wherever you are across the world, uh, thank you very much. Cheers. 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 Back to William. I think. Yes. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Juan. So we've got uh, just two more things to do in the way of, of exit. So firstly, uh, what we'd like to do is a kind of slightly strange tradition at the DPC, which is to try and grab a screenshot with everyone's face uh, uh, on it. So maybe I could uh, ask John to coordinate that for us. If I can encourage you, please just turn your cameras on again for a moment, if you're able to do that. And if you've got a glass in your hand, you know, uh, it's your chance. Uh, and uh, with a moment's notice, maybe a countdown could be provided. We'll try and get a cat. We'll try and capture a shot of everyone celebrating, right? So that's uh, uh, okay. I know it may be working hours, but this is no seco, so I'm all right. Uh, we'll uh, we'll raise a glass to everyone <laughs> to success and for their contributions. So on a count of three, everyone do a big cheers, okay? One, two, three, cheers! cheers. <laughs> I don't know if John caught that at all. John, did that make any sense at all? Can we have one more, please? Like a chat box is fine at the same time. Can one more. <laughs> if we have to drink some more, we'll do it. Uh, uh, so three, two, one. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. <laughs> okay, so we'll hope that worked. Uh, we also, uh, I realise we've got a message from Brian and from Shira who have joined us, a time zone snafu. Uh, I don't know, Brian or Shira, if you actually heard the exciting news uh, about the uh, levels uh, of born digital access uh, winning uh, earlier on. Uh, so I wonder if you're inclined to put your microphones on just for a brief moment to say hello and prove that we haven't toppled you off a mountainside somewhere or something to <laughs> we're, no we're, he we're, we're here we're here and we're embarrassed <laughs> we, we checked the time before daylight savings happened over the weekend in the united states and we checked the time before the time change and so we all had this on our calendars we all set our alarms i'm even wearing a fancy dress the whole thing <laughs> and we uh i i chatted brian um you know, right before I was logging on and he was like, I, I think it already started. I don't know what's going on. And it's like, oh man, do I have a few more minutes to make my coffee? And then we logged on and <laughs> it was right. <laughs> we're so embarrassed um wonderful it is wonderful to have you with us uh, shira and brian <laughs> we owe you a round of applause having you missed the excitement earlier uh, so many many congratulations so let's do one more round of applause everyone for shira and for brian hey. 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 winners of the software sustainability award for research and innovation so many many congratulations Thank you. Thank you much. so much. We're really, um, we're really honored and moved. <laughs> Fantastic. So, uh, Sarah, what's next? Well, I should say that normally we would have given you your trophies in person and we would have given you your certificates in person. But look, I've got them here. So they do exist. Um, so I'll pop them as in the post here. I'll be in touch with all of the winners um, to see where you would like them sending because you're all all over the place. Um, and finalists, you'll be receiving uh, your certificates as well. Um, but I think that wraps up proceedings, actually, the, the formal bits anyway. So uh, I think it's probably time to open the champers 
or the no secco, uh, unless you know you've already done it and you've drunk half a bottle already. Um, so I think this commences the informal chit chat portion of our of our uh, gathering. Fantastic, thank you, uh, Sarah. Thank you all very much.